the use of humor, uh, again, referring back to that pie chart, I just thought that was a very good way of presenting conflicts between a couple of people in terms of time management and all that. Um, and uh, just some of the interactions between the actors uh, and some of the props that you use that were almost cliche, but actually from people I talked to who've been through the whole divorce process, breakup or breakup in relationships, you know, are, are so real uh, about the time and things that, you know, you, you go through uh, college, uh, you meet someone, you get married, then there's the children and all those things, you hit all those notes. And I think that resonates because uh, a lot of conflict and breakups occur because of all these pressures. And we had a dream of what we thought would be, and I, I thought you presented that well, and that, that is something that I think an audience can really relate to. Good. That's what we're trying to do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stephen, then David. So I, I, I really appreciate it from the opening scenes and from, from the, the finding the life partner and, and I really uh, appreciated like the timing of how that, that art went from ecstasy and bliss to, to difficulty and then toward the end. But, and, and hitting those pieces in between, but just within the timing itself, you capture them was captured like an entire existence of a relationship very quickly and kind of structured the whole rest of the piece based on, ah, that's what goes on from here. Also kind of continues to strike me throughout the whole piece, the sense of coming back to being a wash at sea and the chaos, and then coming through that chaos a number, number of times into uh, in instances that are rec recognizable experiences. The other thing I really appreciated was what, this, was the balance between uh, kind of the male experience and the female experience. So, oh, good. Yes, that yeah. was definitely a big part that we were working from from the yeah. first time to the second time was to add it. I mean, so we brought change. another actor and we're working on that because it was very female heavy, I think, the first time. Yeah, so great. I'm glad that worked for you. Yeah, it, was, it seemed to be a pretty significant change from the, from the first piece. Was, cool. Was that, and it really, came across just in terms of the message. Cool. Dave? Yeah, that opening sequence again with the, uh, the romance and then the sort of rush of hope uh, as the ensuing pressures come on you and that enthusiasm and then just the crush of reality right at the end. I can't relate to it at all. Yeah, I know. It's a really thing to do in your life, right? <laughs> no, but it was really uh, such a... I thought a uh, compact storytelling that felt really uh, real, and to end it on on that note of that I think everybody, many people can relate to of just that realization of oh shit you know here we are here's somebody I was in love with and here we are it's really powerful. It's nice. I mean, one thing that we were uh, able to. Um, us respond with the Ted, can we get the pat the work song? Yeah, it's really <laughs> <a> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. um, yeah, great. <laughs> um, but um but yeah it was really nice we have like the with um Lucinda's direction and just being able to um uh with uh, people who are well versed in speaking and moving and talking and sort of interdisciplinary work that, that we can allow the the movement um, and a song to really convey a story and allow that to be enough, you know. So um, that was really satisfying, and um, it was a journey, you know, like figuring out how we're going to do that. You know, at first I was like, let's do it in like photographs, you know. There's like click, 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 because it happens so much. We know those photos so well. Even the I would put the dress on and I would start talking differently. Like, cause like the, the 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 silhouette of the bride, which, like she takes up a lot of space. She demands a lot of attention. You know, like um, anyway. So um, uh, I, you know, I think it's to the credit of the group that we uh, we were able to um, work in the not just um, you know different ways of how to convey convey a story. Thank you. We have like two minutes left. Okay.
and a quick question. Yeah. Uh, just by a show of hands, who here has been through a divorce or the breakup of a significant relationship? Outing. And, 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 and of you, uh, who found something during the show that you went, at some point going, you went, oh, but that resonated for you, that brought up oh. your own experience? <laughs>
is uh, what did you like or were interested by? And so we'll hold space to have that answered. And the second question will be, what were you confused by? So those are your two choices. So we'll start with, <laughs> what did you like or were interested in? I love how you implemented all these different artistic talents that you all have. With dancing, singing, language intertwined with dance and singing, and um, the movement. It's just beautiful the way you used the stage and how you all played off each other so well. Um, so I really, I really like that a lot. Can I answer the second question? <laughs> I, I'm really confused about, like, I'm going to have trouble sleeping tonight. <laughs> I want to I love the simplicity and the beauty of the beginning with just the kind of 50s housewife. Mm -hmm. And I like how you brought it back at the end. They still don't really understand what that was about. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not to be coy, but I, one of the best things I liked about it was when I was confused. And um, I almost, <laughs> I almost thought, oh, I wish they hadn't explained to me so much about mm -hmm. the uh, condition. Mm -hmm. Like, like once I knew that, it almost located it so much that I kept putting it through that filter. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the other thing I really liked about it was the bookends of the beginning and the end because. We rarely get to see something shown to us twice, and it's totally different at the second time. So I really like that. Thank you. What I thought was nice was the symbolism of the taste of a person, because everyone that brings home to everyone <laughs> the taste of a person. So I did feel that and think about that with people. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I really liked, I guess it was at the end, but you also seem to have it a lot at the beginning and then there were kind of moments scattered throughout it where you just have, would have like intense bits, a whole bunch of different colors and prints and all that kind of thing going on on stage. And, uh, or just sometimes, you know, you'd be talking about the experience of color when you're you know, doing this or doing, or doing that or whatever. And that, to me, sort of really hit that kind of, a uh, sense of what it must be like to have a situation where something simple like a letter or a number causes another little kind of explosion of color or that kind of thing. That, that same sense of overload but also delight, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so I really like that. Yeah. Yes. I like the sense of play a lot, such that even, it, like, I feel like it's easy to take yourself really seriously when you put on a show and of, of any kind. So it was really fun to just kind of get lost in the silliness of it. Um, I also really liked how you were able to deliver teaching moments in kind of in clever ways. I thought the TED Talk thing was actually very cute, mm -hmm. and um, it felt very fresh. It was a good way of delivering exposition, essentially. Um, and the whole idea of like going to a conference in the Marriott and getting drunk, and all, that was a kind of a fun way of, of turning this kind of dry scientist trope into something a little bit more entertaining. Uh, although I do agree with you, I think that the, it could have been less explanation. I think I think when once people got it, they got it, and you could have gone all sorts of different ways with it without having to stop and explain what you were what you were showing us. And I think people would follow you there. So. Yeah, I, I I really like the way you. Set up the individual vignettes and how they, set up the, the individual scenes yeah. and how they, they came about and they were, they were different. I mean, it, it wasn't a complete arc, but the arc was this, was was kind of pulled together for me by the way you heightened particular senses and perceptions and things like the colors or the sound or the taste or the aroma or something like that. And how you you brought that particular sense to life and then transformed it or blended it with another in, in the individual vignettes and, and things. And that, that was really, I really appreciated that. And I, I, for me, in terms of the, like the explanations, of, I, my, my sense is I, I feel like I, I really appreciated the times you took to explain what was going on because it made some connections. And that could, that could be useful and shortened. 
maybe it's a few less words, not completely wiping it out, but maybe compacting a little bit of that. Um, we're talking about when the scientists are speaking? Each individual time. When the scientists are speaking, when, when, you, when you sat down, you know, talking to the audience uh -huh. and uh, going through you know, what this was about. Right. Each of those particular kinds of moments. Just a little compressed. I, uh, Less yeah, I, I would say I would say be, be brutal, but it might, brevity might be a uh -huh. better term. Okay. Thank you. We, have, uh, we need to switch in a moment to things you were more confused by, going towards that emphasis, but we love to hear what you like. <laughs> um, I got so interested in those characters at the beginning and the end. I thought you were going to tell me the story of the 50s, how women had such a horrible life that they had to like, invent new ways to make it fascinating. You can do that in, you know, in all of the ancient history. So I, I wish that you would go and make a piece just about those three women. <laughs> and forget about, you know, but use the same exact concept, but don't tell anybody. And so I just like, how they make it today, and I just can't, rem I can't forget hanging up pizza and fish and fear, because it felt like everything that men do, you know, like, <laughs> I thought it was a whole piece about women in the 50s and what men, you know, what they had to do to hang up to make the men who were playing sports in the background, or watching sports in the background. I don't know, I just thought it was so hilarious. I wanted to see more about that. <laughs> Thank you. One of the things I really loved was how you explored this motif of family in synesthesia, because for me what's really interesting about synesthesia is this, it's this very concrete way to understand how people's minds work differently. And my memories of it are bound up you know, with my brother and me as a child talking through the characters of the alphabet and being like, well, A is a woman, no, A is a man, like, and the relationship with that. And um, one of the other things I really loved was this Nabokov piece talking about the father and son um, and their relationship to synesthesia. And I just would love to actually have more of that because there's such cool stories with the Mumbako family because, you know, obviously the grandmother also had synesthesia. And there's this interesting way in which the way that people differentiate themselves from their families, from their loved ones, the way that people very closely together do have different perceptions of the world is sort of intersected with synesthesia. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering just because that's such a wacky family and there's so many like interesting motifs sort of like the like you know Vladimir running around with the butterfly net or his son who's like also an opera singer later. Like it just seems like they would be such fun people to have on stage. And it also might sort of intersect in interesting ways with the other family motifs you have there with the cantaloupe which was such like a vivid, like visceral in my mouth, like cantaloupe and toothpaste. And also with that idea of the mother-in-law who can't smell the flowers. So that maybe that just might be another like place to give more of that same, some of those same themes. We have like two minutes maximum. So uh, any other confusions? I was thinking, I, I, well, the main thing I was saying, but the, the, the idea of actually being more confused, like, um, like what is it? To, I think the the time where I'm most drawn into the um, the ed education part of it, which I personally need because I didn't know anything about this until you told me that you were going to do this piece. So um, so that's good. I need and maybe it comes later. But but what was most what draws me in is when I the, from the real stories, the narrative of the humans themselves. The voiceover, the monologue about the mother, that you know, hearing that from inside the characters, and you guys are so good at doing character work that I think there's more to massage in there, and also the, um, like, just what's it like to actually um, keep experimenting with these, um, on theatrically, how do you take taste and you know, image and keep moving that together? I think I'm I'm very interested in more with all the, you know, talent you have on stage, like, what you can more come out of with that. Visual images that... Visceral just... images. You know, what's it like to, like, I don't know, like, bounce into each other and, like, see color, or, like, I don't know. Uh, you know, this idea that you're talking about with Roy Hart and the sound, like, what happens if that's choreography? Yeah. I don't know. You know, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of potential there, I think, in the cast that you have and create.